Hi there, uh, welcome to PE. I'm Mr. Tebbett and I'm the head of PE at East League Academy. I'm disappointed I can't be with you in person as my enthusiasm for this subject is much more infectious when I'm face to face. With this in mind, please don't hesitate to contact me after the presentation with any questions that you have. My email is on the screen and I'll be more than happy to give you a call to discuss anything further. Our main strengths um, as a course are our superb staff expertise. We have three members of staff who all teach different components of the course. It's the experience of these staff that we feel goes a long way in engaging you in the course and securing those ex excellent progress in your studies. Not only that, uh, but if you've had the experience of me as your teacher at GCSE, you'll understand that I'm more than willing to go above and beyond um, to make sure that you get all the support that you require in order to do as well as possible on the course. I'm a huge believer in bringing the curriculum to life. We've had a dreadful year with lockdowns and restrictions, scuppering our plans to provide opportunities um, to <clears throat> go outside of the classroom. With small class sizes of around 10 to 12 students, we're keen to get out into the sports industry and experience some of the incredible facilities this country has to offer. We have a long-standing link with Loughborough University where we often visit the physiology lab and do some lab-based testing. In addition to this, I've recently set up links with St Mary's University um, to, do, to carry out some biomechanical analysis, uh, which involves an overnight trip to London and more locally with the Boardman Performance Centre in St George's Park. Whether it's a career in sport or a subject you enjoy and wish to combine as part of your A-level options, I highly recommend this subject to you. The subject staff are about to give you a snapshot of what the course has to offer as well as some personal insights and future pathways from some of our students. I hope you think about joining us. Here's one of our A-level students, uh, Ellie Fletcher. Ellie, what, what career aspirations do you have? Um, well, Sport A-level has complemented my other two A-levels, Chemistry and Biology, extremely well. When I leave sixth form, I want to go to university to study biomedical science and hopefully specialise in sports medicine at the end of this course. This component is assessed at the end of the course through a two-hour written exam, which equates to 30% of your overall grade. You'll spend two out of your five lessons weekly with myself, Mr. Tebbet, exploring the human anatomy and the physiology behind elite performance. We will also consider the impact of training and producing the desired adaptations within the body to be successful in competition. You'll develop a deeper understanding of how to improve fitness components through a variety of training methods. Furthermore, you'll understand the adaptations that occur in the muscle fibres and how these structural and functional characteristics can enable an athlete to sustain high intensity performance and maximise their body's capabilities. We aim to complement the course content with exploration both within the classroom and further afield in purpose-built facilities such as those of Loughborough University. Picture below is a student this year about to embark on the VO2 max treadmill protocol to test his aerobic capacity. It's opportunities like this that we feel are really important in not only building a student's enthusiasm for the subject, but also so they can explore what career pathways are available to them. So Guillermo, uh, what made you select A-Level PE? Um, well, I chose A-Level PE because um, I did it in GCSEs uh, and I did pretty well. And I looked at the previous results that other years got and I saw that there was, um, they were all very high. And I thought it would be um, a good um, A-Level for me to do and get a good grade uh, going into uh, uni and everything, so yeah. The biomechanics section is part of paper one alongside the anatomy and physiology. Amongst other things, we'll look at Newton's three laws of motion, which helps to explain how objects move, stop and accelerate. We'll also look at velocity, both linear and angular. So, for example, why does an ice skater spin quickly when he or she suddenly tucks their limbs close to the axis of rotation? We'll also look at sports such as cycling, and try to understand how they minimise the effect of air resistance by changing the shape they are or the clothes they wear. We have a video now that can explain a little bit more. Success behind the innovations you see today. Inside the wind tunnel, baseline readings start the protocol. Then the position experiment starts. Systematically working through a list of changes to try and reduce a rider's CDA and at every step, measurements taken from every angle possible. Discussing the options and listening to rider feedback made my experience even more valuable and, at the end of the day, finding a 20 watt saving 
is very. I'm here with Meg Curtis. Uh, so Meg, um, how have you found A Level PE? Um, I took A Level PE because it worked really cohesively with my other A levels of chemistry and biology. Um, the teacher support has been outstanding and it's helped me uh, with things to put on my university applications and I hope to study physiotherapy at the University of Southampton. My name is Miss Paxton and I'll be teaching you the skill acquisition and sports psychology elements of the syllabus. This is examined on paper two, which is a one hour exam consisting of 60 marks. And this paper equates to 20% of your total A-level. Be ready to learn how individual differences such as personality, attitudes and motivation may influence performance. And together we'll consider the mental element of sport and how it can impact both success and failure. For example, swimmer Michael Phelps used visualisation of the ideal performance to build both self-confidence and outcomes in the pool. Contrastly, if an individual's mental game is off cue, this can lead to shocking sporting failures, such as that of Rory McIlroy in the 2011 Masters, where he threw away a really convincing lead to come 14th place. From a team perspective, we can delve deeper into incidents such as the 2014 World Cup, where Brazil crashed out in the semi-final to Germany with a 7-1 loss on home soil. From a psychological perspective, we can analyse where the team dynamic potentially fell down here to lead to such a big defeat. Finally, if we continue to look at team sports, the New Zealand rugby team's iconic hacker is a renowned pre-match ritual to fuel their pride, strength and unity. What influence do we think that this can have on the opposition? Hopefully, this summary and these few examples just give you a small flavour of what's to come and I look to forward to further unravelling the psychological element to sporting performance with you. Sport and Society considers the emergence and evolution of modern day sport. We're going to take a journey back through time and consider how social and cultural factors of pre and post industrial Britain shaped the sports and pastimes of modern society. The Sport and Society forms paper three. This is assessed via a written exam at the end of the two year course that is one hour in duration and worth a total of 60 marks, which is broadly equivalent to 20% of your overall grade. I'm now going to pass you over to Mr. Can, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about the Sport and Society elements of the course. The globe. I think many of you will find this a really interesting topic. I've got Gabby Brown here with me. Gabby, tell us about your A-level PE experience. Um, originally, I was planning to go to Wish Bridford and Mr Tevitt convinced me to stay. I, I'm glad I decided that this decision has been really helpful over the last few years. Um, over the last few years, the teachers have also given me a, a lot of support to help me get my desired grade. Um, in the future, I plan to work in the sport industry, uh, but I'm not sure what that will be yet. I'm Amy and I'm currently in year 12 studying A-level sports studies but I didn't actually take it as an option for GCSE. I was very sceptical at first about taking the subject but the teachers were very supportive and I found that I fitted in really easily with the rest of the group and I'm really enjoying it so far. I have to work hard to keep on top of everything but the teachers are very helpful with that and so I'm really glad that I took it as an A-level option. Each element is scored out of 30 marks and together this equates for 30% of your overall grade. Let's take a closer look at the API. Here you will analyse the performance and identify the main strengths and weaknesses. Look at the golfer in the image. You can see that the golfer maintains really good posture throughout the swing. This makes the swing more fluid and maximises the follow through on the drive. In addition to this, the knees are slightly bent, providing a good base of support and stability. It's an analysis like this that you'll be expected to carry out on a performance. The second element we talked about was the practical component. Here you will select one sport from the list below where you will have to demonstrate a range of skills, tactics and also one, com one full competitive performance. Thank you for taking the time to uh, watch our presentation. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, um, just get in touch. Use the email address below and I'll be happy to give you a call to uh, answer any questions that you may have.